It's time. Come on, let's be positive, mate. Big weekend. Lots of sport on. Lots of things to be happy about. Let's come, be, on. Oh, come on. Let's be positive. Let's be positive. Just stop right there. Stop right there. No negativity. None. Let's be, be positive. positive. That's right. LBP. Let's, let's be, be positive. positive. That's what we want. Matt Gunn out of Twizel. Where the temperature is a, a, a nice balmy 7 or 8 degrees right now, from what I understand. And we're going to talk about Joe Guanu from F1, landing on his bonds and the halo protecting him. All Blacks with a win. His Wallabies with a win. Warriors and the Dogs. Warriors win, Dogs run over. Wooden Spoon waits, Kyrgios. All of that to talk about. Plus Declan Casey. It's meant to be your dream, isn't it? Debuting for your favourite club, for your boyhood club. And every single thing that that guy touched on Friday night was a disaster. So Gunny joins us and, mate, let us be positive, first and foremost, about our Warriors. And even you had a tear in your eye yesterday afternoon. Tell me. Oh, Martin, the world's back in equilibrium. It's Thank back you. to normal. Thank the you. The doggies lost, the Warriors back at Penrose Park, and not only that, 26,009 Fans turn out. Who wouldn't want that crowd? And they also tell me Pi here is back in the Bay of Islands. The world is back in equilibrium, Marty. Fantastic. Okay. <laughs> so look, look, and I was talking uh-huh. to Bluey about this before, and I love the emotion from the bloke as well. I mean, we, it's important we draw a line under this and go and, and actually say this is not a season resurrection. It's not anything like that. No pun intended with your distillery, but the Warriors season has been rubbish. This was a lovely interlude to make us forget about that. But it starts again, being rubbish as of today. Yeah, well, you're probably right. Home sweet home, one of the signs that featured during the broadcast and yep. in some of the pictures in newspapers after. And, you know, really, it was a good, it was a great feeling to see them back there. And, you know, we've given them plenty of stick. You know, we've sort of summed up their season. We've called them rubbish and all the rest of it. But they lifted, didn't they? They yeah. dominated. The stats would have you believe that it was a pretty even match, but actually... They never let the opposition, you don't even need to say they were, they never let them in. And, you know, after whatever it was, Martin, over a thousand days, three years sort of thing, without playing at home, what a lovely thing for the team to have such a crowd. Yeah. And those Warriors fans who have been pants, who have been teased, they've been titillated, they've seen some good performances, but ultimately been let down. They showed up and they said, you know what, we're Warriors fans. We're like the Dogs fans. At the end of the day, we don't care. We just want to go to the game. We want to be around the people that want to be there with us. And, look, I enjoyed it. I really did enjoy it. Good on you. And I felt delighted for them to get that win. Speaking of your Dogs, though, what a throwback that was on Friday night. Ankle deep water, mud, constant rain, a waterlogged... We used to call it a waterlogged pitch. I hadn't heard that word. I think it was Bronny on the telly. I said waterlogged. I hadn't heard that word since I was a kid, mate. Yeah, pitches aren't supposed to get waterlogged these days. They're supposed to have pr- particularly good drainage. I mean, at times, all you could see was rain. Yeah. You know, it was just a slog fest, wasn't it? It was tough. It would have been freezing cold. How do you hang on to the ball in conditions like that? All you're thinking about is you just want to get back in the sheds and get some fresh socks on. Change your jocks, don't you? Look, I don't want to talk too much about the game. I've been on such a high. We hadn't lost in three weeks. Okay, one of those weeks we didn't play. (laughs) We hadn't lost in three weeks, and it felt fantastic. Yeah. And then, of course, yeah. I mean, we were okay the other night, but well beaten. So... Uh, oh, look, I thought that the whole game... Picked, I thought that the thing game, of the past. Put a roof on every stadium. I thought the game was summed up by your mate Declan Casey making his debut. He had the nastiest moustache and the worst rat's tail, and it, it was made to look worse because every time the ball was thrown to him, he dropped it. And I was just thinking, dude, please hang on to one. He'd drop another one. And then in the end, he gets HIA, and he probably won't remember his debut, and that's a good thing, Matt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't want to remember that. You didn't want to remember that. He will have the horrendous photos of how he looked on the night, you know, but he might enjoy the way he looks. That's not a look I like. It's coming back big time, Martin. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Have you all, noticed? It's if awful. you walk around those yeah. sleazy little mustaches, yeah. guys between sort of 20 and 35, they're yeah. wearing these mustaches and they're going for the shaved sides, mullet at the back, scruffy looking do. It's, it's, it's a step back for society. It is. Don't need that. No. I thought we got through that. I did. 
The All Blacks. You know? I'm going to ask you, I'm going to say we were magnificent after the 20 minute mark when we scored four tries in 30 seconds. I was more impressed, to be honest, with your blokes, the Wallabies winning against England down to 14 men. Yeah, well, that's always tough, isn't it? Look, the All Blacks, first and foremost, I was hoping for a much better game than that. The Irish have been super competitive against the All Blacks, beating them even. And sometimes you go into a match like that with high hopes. Obviously, the B team were beaten by the Maldi side. But you go into that with high hopes. The All Blacks, though, delighting the fans, yep. delighting the coaching staff, who, by the way, I was extremely disappointed to see attend to the match. I thought they would have stayed in isolation and done the Zoom. I thought that was probably one of the most exciting things we discussed about it was going to be the halftime Zoom. But they didn't need to. They didn't need to. Were you disappointed there too? Well, I was until I heard Fozzie speak after the match when he said at his press conference that he's coached an all-black side for the first test of the season, Zoom all week, and he's still married. And I thought that was magnificent. <laughs> I thought that, that was magnificent. And for well, the man... Copped it, hasn't for he? the man Fozzie's is still copped ever... it. He picked the wrong players. He put them in the wrong position. Yep. And actually... He got it didn't right. work out too bad. No, he got it, it right. Is it, you know, and, and putting Scott Barrett right. there at number six was the exact thing that we needed. And I haven't heard, to hear that sound? That's the sound of all the people that carp on him all the time who don't actually you know, have enough to be able to turn around and say the guy got it right that time. Um, yeah, no, I didn't read too much of that. And he did get it right. And good on him. And it was a good performance that the Wallabies, Martin, yeah. beating England, who have been a very good side with a man down. I mean, there's not much better to... There's not much better for the Wallabies than that. And now, after saying the hope, the hope, the hope that the Irish might bring some competition to the All Blacks, because, you know, look, at the end of the day, you can watch floggings and you can watch big score lines, and it's all great seeing plenty of tries. But good tight games, they always feel a little bit better. Are the Wallabies going to be competitive ongoing? Well, if that's any indication... I think the answer is yes. I think the answer is yes because of the way that he's got the team playing. You've got to remember, this is a Wallaby side that your first five got injured before the warm-up, but that's because he was old back at the 2011 Rugby World Cup. So you've got no first five, right? You've got a moron that actually got suckered into a little baby head button, got sent off. So he so he's obviously doesn't have the temperament for international rugby. Yet despite that, despite not having a game controller, like you imagine if you had a Bowden Barrett or a Richie Mwanga in charge of that side. How, you know, yeah. how, what, the, no, what, no. what the potential is. So, you know, Dave Rennie's doing something with Australian rugby, mate. He really is. Yeah, well, he's put some heart into the team, perhaps, Martin. I'm not sure, but there was plenty of guts in that. And, you know, to be thrown into disarray before the kickoff and still get the job done, yeah. it does show a bit of calmness, doesn't it? It shows that perhaps the team has a lot of confidence in the guys either side of them, and they actually just bought into it. They believed that they could do it. And actually, guess what? They did. Do they it. did do it. They yeah. bring on the rest of the season. No, yeah. it was good stuff. And, and also, some good and some good solid sport. You know, some yeah. good enjoyable stuff to see. Um, Wales down to twelve men, which is just ridiculous, isn't it? When I mean, at that stage, you think something's gone wrong with the game or the people that run it or something. When it's down to twelve, but I wanted to talk about. I don't know whether or not this is courageous or stupid or a combination of both, but Jai Upatire, who and we spoke to Dean Lonergan as promoter about this earlier. He broke his jaw, Matt, in the second round of 12. He broke his jaw. Now, we've we've just been sent by Lonergan the, the, the actual uh, x-ray of his jaw, which was broken on the other side by the end of the match as well. And, you know, he couldn't talk afterwards. You want to see the cracks. And it's not just a, a slight little hairline crack. This is actually like somebody's taken an axe to his jaw. Well, I suppose, you know, the, the fact that it was cracked on the other side by the end of the fight says everything about whether or not he should have continued. You know, you've got to go off if you get a head injury. They take you straight off. Now, obviously, you know, in a sport like that, you can't take someone off. It's about being knocked in the head. However, they must have had a pretty good idea that there was really serious issues. And if the jaw's floating around on one side, I don't suppose it's that hard to crack the other. Is it stupid? Yeah, oh, look, I, I, I really think it is. Well, for you and me, um, it is because we don't get into the ring. Because I think getting into the ring is stupid. You know, what I mean, but I, I, I don't oh, mean yeah, I, I don't mean any disservice to any there. fighter by saying that. It's just that I'm not going to get in there, and neither are you. And there's a good reason for that. Oh yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. We're not prepared. For it. We're not trained for. It. You know, don't want to do. We it. know. We know a hundred percent that we're not going to last twenty seconds in there. You know, if we could run around for twenty seconds long enough to stay away, maybe you'd get that through. <laughs> we wouldn't. But, but at the end of the day. Is one victory worth what might follow on from that? Oh. If, you, if, you, if, you, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm with you. 
you know, it's an individual sport. You're representing yourself. It's all on the line. There's no one to fall back on. If you get beat, you're out. Your record changes. It's all about you. There's no one to step in. There is no substitution. There's no one by no. the left or right of you. They're all on the outside. Um, so, you know, in some ways, okay, um, you keep going. You keep doing everything you can to get the win and keep your career going. However, however... You know, this is a pretty serious injury. And where does that leave him for the future? How long does it take you to come back? Well, I don't know. From double fractures for in double the jaw. Fractures of jaw yeah. I mean, he's going to be wired up. You would think he'd be eating through a straw. Yeah. You'd think his training will be pretty I much I think it's a year, mate. I think it's the best part of a year, to be honest. Oh, well. I mean, you know, and so is it worth it? Well, on the basis of if it's, if it's going to be a year, if things go well, uh, you'd have to say it's not worth it. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, they make the choice. He stayed out there. He could have walked away. That's right. He'd stayed I mean, out there. Does the adrenaline reason. mean you don't feel that pain? <laughs> I I pulled a hamstring at ten pin bowling on the weekend. Oh hello! I was downhill for go. the last five frames. But but you but, and, but, but and, and I could hardly move around, let alone a double broken jaw. But you but you kept blo- you kept bowling though, didn't you? No, well, I pushed on through. Yeah. But <laughs> you know, I, I I was looking good for about a one thirty, I think. Uh, I ended up with just under 100. I did beat three 14-year-old girls and a woman oh, on crutches. Oh, that's mad. That's magnificent, mate. Just it out. Just it out. I mean, your wife on crutches and your daughter and her friends. Friend. I even give it a fist pump. <laughs> I give it a fist <laughs> pump. <laughs> yeah. These three young girls and my wife. I mean, I was a bit embarrassed, really. No, no, but, no. But uh, I could hardly ever walk up the stairs to get into the rental that we had in Omaru. All you do. That's doing. how bad it was, Martin. All have you, you ever had a... Have you ever had it, done a hammy? I did a ten pin bowl. No, no I did. Have not I did a push. You've got in the wa- no idea. I put it in the washing out. I did. Let's finish with your mate Kyrgios because you know <laughs> that's that's where we need to finish. Look, he got called uh, a bully. Since a pass in the end, got called soft by him. Matt, I thought it. I thought originally that what Kyrgios needs is a whole lot of his mates to get together because when one of your mates is behaving like a pork chop, what you do as a good mate is you turn around and go, dude, you're behaving like. A, and rhymes with James Hunt, and it's time you pulled your head in. Love you like a brother, but it's time you pulled your head in. I think he's gone past that. I think he's gone way past that. I think it's at the stage How now be where so the tough other guy... How can it be so tough being a tennis player? Well, I mean, How it's, can it be so not. tough? It's not. That every, the world's against you all the time. Everyone's against you all the time. You know what I think? I think Nick Kyrgios has, has bought into the fact that this is part of who he is. Yeah. This is part of his game. Yeah, I think so. And, and in some ways... I think to myself, well, if you're not winning tournaments, maybe the best way to get yourself on camera and get the coverage, and let's let's be honest, he gets plenty of that. He gets a lot of it. For the wrong reasons, but still he does, and he's still got sponsors on board, yep. and he's still being supported. Yep. Um, but I think he believes he must. I mean, I just, I, 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 he spat at someone the other day. He's abusing the crowd. He's getting involved in areas of the game, which one would think, could only be distracting to him. But to be called a bully by a fellow player, look, you know, when we were kids, Mark, when, when you were at school, there was a schoolyard bully, and he was probably normally coming from a, a broken home or a rough home or somewhere where he was picked on himself, and it was consistent and it was this constant um, niggling and bullying and intimidation of another smaller child yeah. in most cases. Yeah. These days, what bullying tends to be, and I think we've just lost sight of it. You know, my my young girl and her friends use bullying all the time. But it can be a comment someone makes about a, a whole situation which makes them a bully. It doesn't necessarily have to be someone picking on someone in the old school terminology constantly. You know, one-off comments or, you know, something that happens here or there does not make one a bully, no, make, I wouldn't no, have no, thought. No, I totally with you. And, 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 and these guys are playing for tens of millions of dollars across the season. Yeah. They make it to the upper echelons of the game. Their life is good. Hard Their enough. life is terrific. Yeah, you know, and, and, and look, you don't even have to win to make more money than we make all year. You can, you can progress through some of these tournaments and take home paychecks, but just make your life just something else, something out of there. And yet so many of them, uh, it seems like... <laughs> unless everyone's patting them on the back and rubbing them on the shoulder and patting them on the bum and telling them they're great people every minute of the day, someone's a bully or their life's too tough. I mean, they really need to travel a bit more outside of the tennis circuit and see how people actually do live. That is it in a nutshell, and thank you very much. You've summed it up perfectly.